Welcome to the video guys, we got something here that is both insane and infuriating and is currently being reported by the media outlet, The Argus. Brighton Hammer Thief spared prison because she is transgender. You just believe this shit, you think, oh that's just a sensationalised headline. No, it literally is that. A wine thief who brandished a claw hammer was sent to prison only to be dragged back into court and spared jail because she is transgender. Layla Le Fay, 40, entered the budging store in Queens Road, Brighton to steal the alcohol, then threatened to hit manager Enoch Aditeo with the hammer when challenged. At Lou's Crown Court yesterday, Judge Stephen Mooney jailed her for six months. When you took out the claw hammer, it must have been terrifying, he said. Which kind of tells me she deserved more than six months in prison for it if they are trying to claw hammer people up. He told her there was no excuse to wave the hammer and assault Mr. Adeteo. It must be immediate custody because I see nothing in the offence itself or indeed in you that would render it unjust for me not to implement it, the judge said. This is of course the first time they was in prison when he actually sent them down. But one hour after being sent down for six months in prison, Le Fay was brought back into court. Her barrister, Rebecca Upton, said that because Le Fay did not have certified evidence of her gender reassignment, she would have to go to the male-only Lou's prison. I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing if they did not have certified evidence of gender reassignment, then it likely didn't take place. I'm not entirely sure, but my guess is there's definitely a chance there's still meat and two veg swinging around there. I could be wrong, but why wouldn't you have the evidence for it or be able to get it so you could be sent to the correct prison if you didn't want to go to the male only one, which you would have been told by your solicitor was going to happen. That I am sure. But here you see her solicitor, Miss Upton, also said prison regulations state she could not be kept in solitary confinement there. So why did prison regulations state that that couldn't happen then when they managed to keep Tommy Robinson in solitary confinement for a good fair while, you know? Seems kind of strange that they can't do it this time. The only way Le Fay could prove her new gender would be an undignified examination, one which court staff were not prepared to do, Miss Upton said. Yeah, because I suppose it is kind of undignified, checking if you still got a ding-a-ling swinging, isn't it? Judge Mooney said, issues have now arisen. You have heard why, in those circumstances, I came to the conclusion that I had to send you to prison. Yes, because they are a criminal and they still should have been sent to prison. We live in a society which acknowledges and embraces diversity and allows and encourages people to live their lives the way they want. Yes, but it shouldn't encourage people to run around threatening people with a claw hammer, which they haven't learned a single lesson from now. Because within an hour of sending them to prison, you have called them back in and removed that sentence. Sometimes society does not make the necessary or appropriate adjustments in all ways it can to reflect the adjustments of society as a whole. The adjustments of society as a whole doesn't change the fucking law. This person broke the law and your first move was to put them in prison, which was the legal and correct move to do. But, because of the woke nonsense that we see in this day and age, a bunch of complete bullshit has rode roughshod over the law and has now given people the opportunity to use this case as a precedent should they decide they're transgender and don't want to prove it in court by showing off what bits they might have. So essentially, if I run around and attack people, I can roll in there and say I'm transgender, but I don't have the transgender assignment evidence, therefore you can't send me to prison, and I'm guaranteed a suspended sentence on the basis of this case. A defendant, solicitor or barrister will use this case as a precedent to try and get their own client off. I am sure of that. She said Le Fay would be vulnerable in a male-only prison. Well, they do have vulnerable prisoner sections in prison, so I don't see why that is a suitable argument. You chose to steal the wine. You chose not to put it back. You chose to brandish the hammer but you have no choice as to how you will be deprived of your liberty. That is the point of prison. They don't have a fucking choice, and there should be nothing that stops them from going there if they've broke the law and the crime warrants it, which, threatening someone with a fucking claw hammer last time I checked, definitely deserves a prison sentence, and more than six months if you ask me. 
Deprivation of liberty itself is a punishment, but there are circumstances where it can be regarded as disproportionate in a society that acknowledges diversity. Diversity has got absolutely fuck all to do with it. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is did this person break the law and was it severe enough for them to go to prison? In this case, the answer is yes and yes. That should be the end of it. Because what this is, is giving preferential treatment to a group of people over everybody else. It's actually discrimination and fucking disgusting. Something really needs to be done about this shit. Having reflected again upon the impact an immediate custodial sentence would have, the difficulties there are, and the intractable problems the prison service would face, I have reconsidered whether imprisonment must be immediate. You've just allowed wokeness to fucking take over the law. It's fucking incredible. In light of this information, I have come to the conclusion that in your particular case, it allows me to hope for some form of rehabilitation. Oh yeah, because you haven't bothered punishing them for the crimes that they've done. They brandished a hammer at someone, threatened them, and possibly even attacked them. I don't actually know for sure, but the only punishment is to let them off. It's fucking incredible. Earlier, Rowan Jenkins prosecuting said LaFay went into the store at 4am on November 6th to steal the wine. Miss Adateo took the wine off her and challenged her, at which point LaFay pulled out the hammer from under her other arm. She tried to grab another bottle of wine and leave, but police arrived and arrested her. So this woman went equipped to perform armed robbery on a shop essentially because she brandished it to the store manager while trying to steal goods from the store, which I'm not a police officer or a lawyer, but to me that sounds like an attempted armed robbery. She tried to grab another bottle of wine and leave, but police arrived and arrested her. Miss Upton said her client has battled with drink and drug addictions and kept herself out of trouble since 2014 before a relapse last year. And that doesn't make any of the slightest bit of difference. This person is clearly an alcoholic with drug addictions and is roaming around the streets with claw hammers threatening people for a fucking bottle of wine. How the fuck can you actually try and defend it and make out like a drink and drug addiction is some sort of mitigating circumstance? It really isn't. That just makes people think she's an alcoholic drunkie and therefore deserves to go to prison for trying to attack people who are doing an honest day's work inside a shop at 4 o'clock in the fucking morning. This person went equipped at 4am to go and rob that shop and would use violence if necessary. Yet this piece of shit judge has decided, in his infinite wisdom, to give her a suspended sentence for six months as you see here. Lafay of Brighton, who admitted common assault and possession of an offensive weapon, was given a six-month suspended sentence with 30 rehabilitation sessions. So, essentially, no punishment at all. Six months suspended sentence and 30 rehabilitation sessions. Brandish a claw hammer at people, and all you get is a six-month suspended sentence. It's an absolute joke, and more so because of the reasoning why they have done this. Because like I said, it's discriminating against absolutely everyone else in favour of one particular group. I'm pretty sure, last I checked, that was against the law. But on that note guys, I am going to end the video there. Now before I go, I've started doing live streams and uploading gaming content on my second channel. If you would like to come and join me for a live stream to chat in real time, have an interesting gaming related content on YouTube or just want to follow me over there because you are a legend, the link will be down in the video description below and as a pinned comment. I hope to see you all there. Now as always, before I go, I want to thank our PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar and YouTube members for supporting the channel along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot and I'll see you all in the next one. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires, <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off.